This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2022 Flagstaff Mac tent trailer. And the model number is 206 LTD. So what this is, this is a supplemental video to the manufacturer's setup video. So you're still going to uh, look at the manufacturer's video. I'm just going to, you know, look at some of the... Uh, some of the features and talk to you about it. Now, this is not a, a, sh a show. This is this is not a, a a sales video or a floor plan video. It's a how-to video. Okay. So here we are. Um, first of all, you have crank down stabilizers, and you do get a three-quarter inch crank for those. Those are scissor type stabilizers, and uh, you could also use the the uh, a three-quarter inch six-point socket on a drill. Just don't over crank them either way. You don't overextend them or over, don't over retract them, okay? You're just taking the wiggle out of the trailer, you're not lifting it. Um, now there's a rail here. The, the cooktop that's inside, which is actually right in there if you can see it, that can stay in there or it can hang outside here. You can use it inside or outside the trailer. Um, it hangs on this rail and there's a hose here, you can see it. That's got a quick connect on it that connects to the to the um, back of the of the grill itself or the, the cooktop itself. So keep that in mind. This, you can hang it inside or outside. Of course, that's just a porch light here. Um, it has a bag awning, which is a really nice one. All of the um, still look at the setup videos and that sort of thing, but all of the poles are are stored in the rafter. The rafter is the the piece uh, that that runs the length of it or the width of it I guess and it's all all the way out so when you, the piece that's all that's on the end when you're extended um, carries all the poles so you just you, they're on hinges so you just fold them out set them correctly you can put them straight to the ground and then and then stake them to the ground if you choose to that's the way I do it um, the other way is to go from the from the rafter that I told you about into the side of the trailer here um, that puts a lot of stress on the trailer, although it won't hurt it. And also, people tend to want to run into it at night. So I, I believe the best way is going straight down. It's really up to you, though, it's personal preference. But um, the Dometic uh, A&E awning is an excellent awning. All right, so right now we have the screen door in. Um, when, when the screen door is stowed, you can look at that on your setup video, your... Uh, your travel door fits right in these hinges here. Right now, this is stowed underneath the rear bed. You can see it right there. It just hooks on those hinges, hinges and the bungee cord hooks around the latch. And uh, you store it here when you're, when you're at the campsite, but when you're traveling, obviously, you're, you're putting it up. So um, you have that. You have a crank to crank it up. You see that right here, okay? You also have a deep cycle marine battery and a 20 pound LP tank right here okay um, when you uh, when you raise it you don't want to overextend it you, you keep an eye on this line right here this tension line that that basically is so uh, when you when you put it when you put the top up the roof up um, if you do it till it gets nice and tight like this that, that you're sure that the screen door will fit perfectly right in there so um, that's really what it's for is to gauge how high you need to go for the screen door. Um, if you ever pull this out, go too high. Everybody does eventually. Sometimes it comes from the top, sometimes from the bottom. If it comes out of the top, which is more common, just screw it back in right a quarter inch away from the screw hole that was there. Just screw it right back in. It's not a big deal. Just put it at the same place that it was. All right. Uh, this isn't all set up here. I mean, I, I'm just fiddling with it, but um, obviously this this flap comes around this way, okay? Um, <clears throat> you get a 30 uh, foot, 30 amp cord with a reducer to reduce it down to a 20 amp plug. You also get a, this is just an AC prep. There's nothing in here, but it's a prep port in case you want to add an air conditioner. You can add an air conditioner to this, and if you did, the, the, the cord would come out of here and it would plug in on the top to send power to the air conditioner, okay? Um, I should have taken these off already, but I didn't. Let me see if I got something in my pocket. Well, let me just do it this way. The coin is a good thing to use. 
Okay. Set it over here. In the bottom one, where you're going to see the controls at. The refrigerator is running right now. I can feel the heat just a little bit. It's a gas. It's a gas absorption refrigerator. It's also called a three-way refrigerator. For the, the reason for that is it'll run on three energy sources, right? You can um, run it on 110, 120 AC, or normal current. You can see that's what it's running on right now. That's turned on. Like it says on this sticker here, never double up on the energy sources. Only use one energy source at a time. Um, if you're going down the road, for example, you can, you can run it off 12 volt. Basically, it's taking 12 volt from your battery and, and running the refrigerator. Um, and your battery's being charged by the alternator on your tow vehicle. So uh, you can do that if you need to. Also, you can run it on gas. So to do that, you're just going to go to high, depress this, and spark it like that. That's all you do. You can look in this little porthole here to see if it lights, but um, it'll light usually the first or second pop anyway. But you never double up on, you might have heard it go out when I, uh, when I shut it off. The, you never double up on energy sources like you said, so right now we're using 110 AC. But you've got three options, LP gas, 12 volt DC, and 120 AC. Okay? Alright. This gets a little warm, you can always tell if it's working, if it's warm. Like I said, this is a gas absorption. Now keep in mind, it takes a whole day, depending on the temperature, to cool it down. Once it gets to operating temperature, it'll, it'll, it'll be just fine um, and work like a regular refrigerator. It just takes longer to reach that operating temperature. So give it eight hours anyway. Okay. Now this is a, this is just the, the drain for the sink. Uh, it takes a, it's got a regular garden hose fitting so you can make up a hose that'll go to a bucket or a sewer, whatever you want to do. But that's where that drains from. All right. Now this is the city water hookup. This is the most common way to get water Whoops, to the trailer. You just put the hose on there, turn it on, you're all set. Now if you're camping someplace that doesn't have plumbing on the campsites, you can still fill this fresh water tank right here and um, fill it up and then you, there's an onboard pump. You turn the pump on and it'll pump the water. Everything will work as though it has city water. It'll just be pumping the water out of the tank. So you have two options when it comes to water. Make sure when you get home after you've pulled it 50, 50 miles, 100 miles, whatever, make sure you, you torque the, uh, the uh, bolts again. It's like, a, I think they're, today they're doing 100, 110 foot-pounds, something like that. Just make sure they're snugged up. Okay. Of course, you have a spare tire. Now, one thing to know, you, uh, you want to inspect the seals on this every 90 days. You, any place you see caulk from the factory, you're going to look at and see if there's any separation anywhere. Pay special attention to the, to the plastic corner caps. There's four, obviously. And pay special attention to the vent. Uh, around, you know, to the vent, make sure it's a good tight seal. No leaking. Um, and you do that every 90 days. It just takes you 10 minutes to do it. If you do see an issue, somewhere down the road you will. Um, that's why you inspect it. So when it does happen, you'll be able to jump on it so you won't, you'll protect your investment. So. Uh, keep in mind this one is using clear ProFlex. Don't use caulk from the hardware store. It's not the same stuff. Go to an RV place and get ProFlex or something similar or something comparable, I should say. So um, it's not expensive. You know, it's like 10 bucks for a caulk tube. So um, just make sure you check it regularly. That goes not, not for this trailer. It's for every trailer ever made, whether it's a hard-sided trailer, a travel trailer, a tent camper, whatever. Always inspect the seals. Okay. So let's go inside. Okay. Looks like he's still working in here a little bit. Now make sure this is still wrapped. Make sure when you get home and you're ready to start camping, you take this plastic off of these, these cushions. Um, if you don't, moisture can get inside there and it can actually rot and make it it's worse than not having anything on it. So you want to make sure and remove these from the mattresses once you start camping with it. Okay? If it ever gets wet, you you just let it dry out before you pack it up, before you fold it down. If you have to put this trailer away with the, with the canvases wet, let's say it was raining when you put it down or morning dew was on it, the first chance you get when you get home, the first chance you get is open it up. You, know, you open this window so the screens are open and you, uh, you let the wind whistle through it and leave it up. 
even if you're not camping for a whole season, let's say you're, you're taking a year off whatever for whatever reason, still on a good sunny weekend, open it up a couple times in the summer. Let it, let it dry out. Just let the wind whistle through it and the sun hit it. And um, it, you will never have an issue with mold or anything. But if you put it away wet um, and just leave it like that, you'll eventually get a problem from it. So make sure you, you air it out always. All right, so these, uh, let me look around to see what kind of stuff we have for this. Hold on. I don't know what he's got here. Oh, let's look here. Okay. Ah, here we go. So some tie backs for curtains. These are your keys right here. Okay. Um, these are control. These controllers are for the mattress warmers. So basically, you have this end here, which plugs into the mattress, and then this end here, which plugs into the nearest 110 socket. So what you'll do is you'll find the port. In this case, it's over here. You can see it right in there. And you're going to plug that controller into there. Then you plug it into the regular regular 110 120 plug and um, it takes the chill out of the mattress you can see there's a, a a thermostat on here you can it's all analog you can just turn it up and down and it doesn't it's not a, a heater you're not going to see it heat it's a warmer it just takes the chill out of it okay um, so you have one of those for each mattress the rest of the stuff in here are, is all your paperwork for your um, uh, every every component in here, for example, will have some sort of paperwork for it. That's all in this this pouch right here. Okay, all right. This just this is for your cord. If you if you use it, that bag, your cord will fit in there. Of course, your um, table folds down, and it sits on these these um, cleats right here. So when you're traveling, you need to have it down in the down position, obviously. So you'll put it down when you're traveling. Keep in mind that this right here, this rail right here, once the table's out of the way, you take this right here, your cooktop, you can see you got the other side of the rail there, and you'll actually put it right on there and let it, and you, you sort of put it up on an angle and lock it into place, and that'll keep it from bouncing around the trailer when you're traveling. So it actually stows on that rail there. So you can use this inside or outside like I showed you. This would go to the quick connect that's on the outside right now. You can pull it inside. You hook it up right there. You also have a snap and a strap to keep it from just bouncing around. But like I said, stow it in the correct position when you're traveling down there. Okay? Um, if you, this you just light with a with a lighter. That's all. Two burners. Okay. All right, let me look around a little bit here. Okay, here it is here, okay. So hopefully we can see this. I got my flashlight if I need it here. So this device right here is the power converter. Okay, this converts AC to DC power. So what you have here, on this side you have regular circuit breakers like you see at home, 120 AC. Um, so this is the control panel or the delivery panel, whatever you want to call it, for the, the trailer, right? Um, the other side has 12 volt uh, fuses, so this converts the 110 AC coming in from your from the campground power into the trailer, and it converts it to DC power. So all the DC stuff will run off of this and or your battery. Uh, the thing is, this is a, this is also a battery tender, so if you're um, if you're uh, um, if it's plugged in, it's going to be sensing how much energy your battery has and needs, and keeping your batteries charged. That's important. So when you're pulling it down the road, your tow vehicle's alternator are charging the batteries, and when you're plugged in, this charges the batteries. Okay. So this is the power converter converts AC to DC power. Okay. Now let me get in a better position here. This uh, is the water pump switch here. Remember I told you you can you see water coming out of there because there's water in the fresh water tank. They're still prepping it. Um, remember I told you if, if you don't have city water, you can put water in the tank and then turn that on and it'll pump it. It builds up pressure so it'll shut off. And the only time it'll turn on is when you open the faucet. It'll, the pressure will drop and it'll sense that and it'll start pumping water. When you close it, the pressure builds up and it'll stop. So 
Um, if you're using city water, you don't have to worry about this pump or filling the tank, none of that. This is only if you're pumping it out of, out of the, the fresh water tank or, the, and I should say, this is also used when you winterize the trailer. Okay, a couple USB ports. This is a GFCI here. All the plugs in the trailer, including the one on the outside, are wired through this GFCI. So even if you just have a plug that looks normal, um, like this one, for example, it still says it's GFCI because it's they're all wired through this one right here. So everything's protected. Okay. Now down here is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. Um, so if it goes off, you it's detected uh, carbon monoxide or LP gas, and and uh, so open the door, go outside. Shut the gas off of the front, figure out what's going on, okay? And they take everybody outside, of course. It should always be green like this. If it's not green, get it serviced. Because it's, uh, it's, um, uh, it's an important, important component to the, to the trailer. So if you don't see that green, get it serviced. This is also a low battery alarm. So if it beeps in the same tone as the carbon dioxide or LP gas, but very slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. I'll put it through a test so you can hear what it sounds like. Okay, carbon or LP gas is good, carbon dioxide coming up. Okay, and low battery alarm. So there you have it. Um, if you read it, the, it's kind of hard to read, especially without light here, but it, it'll flash differently. You, it'll, you can tell by looking at it what it's telling you, but the bottom line is if it goes off, and you know, if it's not beeping slowly, that which means it's your battery low. But if it's beeping in the normal, the normal pace, fast pace, you, you assume something's wrong, okay? And, and don't never ignore it or never disconnect it for sure, okay? All right. So you have some storage. You'll see this on the on the setup videos. But you have storage underneath, underneath, underneath the uh, the benches, okay? Uh, lastly, you have two things over here. This is your furnace, and this is the thermostat right here. So, the thermostat, um, you want it to click to this side to shut off. So I'll turn it on. Now, to shut off, it's got to go like this. you got to hear that click to shut it off. Um, so, keep that in mind. Um, this is your refrigerator, of course. Let me get back up off the floor here, if I can. Here we go. So I showed you the controls were on the outside at the lower panel. Um, it runs on either LP gas, carbon monoxide, or carbon monoxide, holy cow. Runs on LP gas, a 12 volt DC or 120 AC. Okay, right now it's cold, it's been running overnight when we're testing it, so it takes a long time to reach operating temperature. Okay, there was one more thing, I, oh, I know what it was. Now, the sink, when you're stowing it, we're gonna lose light here, but I'll turn on my flashlight. You, you pull it forward like this and flip it around, if you can see that. But I just want to show you, if I can, with one hand here. Uh, let's see where it's at. Right down here, if you can see the... Let me get a better... You see that switch right there? It's a push-button switch. There's also another one on the other side. Those are kill switches. So when this is put into place, if you watch, the lights will come on automatically. That's done just so things can't run when you're when you're, you're you have the trailer in the stowed position and you're ready to travel with it. Because as soon as you flip this sink forward so you can lower the trailer, it it trips the kill switch and it shuts the power off, the 12 volt power of the trailer. So that's just a safety device. Now, if you ever have problems, uh, it's very very rare. But if you have a problem and you, and you won't, can't get lights, you want to look at that those switches to make sure that it's everything's making good contact. Okay. Although it's rare for that to happen. Okay, I think that does it. Sorry about the, the terrible camera work here. I know I'm all over the place, but I got a lousy camera and uh, I'm a lousy camera man, so that pretty much covers it. Um, smoke detector, of course. Your, you'll see this in the setup video, but your door folds up and hangs here, your, your screen door. Obviously, you have a vent here. If you ever to add air conditioning, it would go where this vent is. We would take out the vent and put an air conditioner in there. Okay? All right. So, I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Um, please remember what I said about inspecting the trailer every 90 days. You want to look at those seals. Any place you see seal, sealant 
or caulk from the factory you look at just takes you a few minutes if you see sep some cracking or separation happening um, take care of it immediately you, 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 go, you could go years without ever having to uh, to touch it but that's why you're inspecting it just to protect your investment so if you see anything wrong with it you uh, don't use hardware store caulk get clear proflex from a from a RV place and you'll be good also this is now this is not winterized anymore the antifreeze has been purged out of it and so it's in it's in camping mode it's ready to go so um, you remember when it gets cold out you have to winterize it so okay thank you